Competitive swimmers can easily swim 2.5 miles without even training for it, even if they haven't swum in years. Their times might not be the best, but they have a huge advantage over beginner swimmers. Competitive swimmers know how to move through the water without much effort. The slower they go, the easier it gets. That doesn't happen to people with little experience. But there is a way that in just five months, a beginner swimmer can beat a competitive out of shape swimmer in a four kilometer race. Last week, there was a CrossFit competition. They had to swim 200 meters in the sea in the middle of a workout. Many competitors couldn't finish the swim and grab the kayaks. The harder they tried, the slower they move, which tells us that strength is not the most important thing in swimming. A Aaron is what we call the average of the many swimmers we help. We have helped people who couldn't finish a single lap, swim without much effort, complete Ironmans, and do what they thought was impossible. This is how a Aaron trained from zero to a four kilometer swim in the ocean. A Aaron is flying tomorrow to Cancun for his Cozumel Ironman competition. Five months ago, he couldn't swim more than five meters without stopping. Now he is confident about easily swimming 2.5 miles or 4 kilometers. If you think Aaron swam many laps without stopping to prepare for his Ironman competition, you are wrong. As a beginner, the most important thing we told him to focus on was feeling comfortable in the water. The feeling of gliding through the water, keeping his body long, was the most important thing. Rotating and streamline, using his hands as anchor points, was the second most important thing. Out of the five months he had to prepare, three of those were all swimming practices under a thousand meters or yards. At the beginning, he was just swimming about 500 meters. But how is he ever gonna be able to swim four kilometers without stopping, you may ask. Focusing on swimming a lot of distance with bad technique would have resulted in an injury or exhaustion and frustration. There was a bit of frustration, but never combined with exhaustion, at least not in the first three months. We knew he was running and cycling. Cardiovascular endurance wasn't an issue. By giving him a solid swimming technique, it was easy to build endurance for specific upper body muscles. At the beginning of the fourth month, he started a seven week increase in volume and two weeks of taper. He still did at least 15 minutes on technique every session and added one session per week. The time he spent on the water increased up to two hours in the last week before taper. The kicking set was our secret weapon. He's arriving in Cancun three days early. That should be enough to get used to swimming in the sea versus the pool. Here's an example workout that you can download as a PDF through the link in the description. There was a warm up, kick, technique, and main set, and a warm down. The technique set was focused on feeling more comfortable in the water. The kick set was around 400 meters fast. The kick helps stretch and strengthen the core muscles, especially the hip flexors. These muscles are usually tight on people who sit many hours a day and on runners and cyclists. By working these muscles on this range of motion, we're not only helping his swimming, but also his running and cycling. Even if you do what we call aero technique with a two-bit kick, doing hard kicking sets is one of the best ways of building endurance in the water. Remember that even if you're not kicking a lot, you still need to hold this position for a long time. The main set started increasing volume and effort while decreasing in overall rest. At the beginning of this seven-week phase, he was doing four 100s on a two-minute pace, resting 30 seconds after each one. By week seven, he was swimming 20 100s at a 140 pace, resting only 10 seconds. Sometimes we did longer swims like four 400s or two 1000s. That is mainly for mental toughness. He was able to improve so fast because he had a good technique to rely on. He also did his 13 minute dryland workout before every swimming session. This reduced the risk of injury and strengthened the shoulders and core. Now he is on taper. Taper is a gradual decrease in swimming volume, increase in swimming effort, meaning faster swims, and an increase in resting times. Today was the last day of training before he flies off to Cancun. He did a total of 400 meters, and the main set was 1025s at a 90% effort, resting one minute after each one. Those two last weeks, he did this stretching video before going to bed. Speaking of Cancun, we're gonna be there for a six day swimming camp this year. We're gonna have six camps in total, Spain, Cancun, California, Thailand, maybe Florida or Hawaii, and the last one might be in South America. Where in South America would you like us to go? Let us know in the comments. In the next video, we will talk about a Aaron's performance. Click here if it's already available or click here to subscribe. If you want to know more information about our camps, 
click here. And if you want to follow Aaron's steps to success from the beginning, click on this playlist. See you there. Swim fast.